Well, a very good morning to you and welcome back. Many thanks to Hillary for that engagement, you know, about the contraceptives. We get now to change and shift the gear for just a minute and get to talk about youth and politics. Well, it's exactly nine years since devolution took place or rather happened in the country. We have had quite a tremendous things change. And of course, devolution simply means, you know, the dissolution of power and responsibility to counties that is in Kenya, the 47 counties. Today we get to ask, do young people really understand what devolution is? How do we get to, de to dissolve all this matter and get to, uh, get to have an understanding of what devolution is all about? Joining me this morning, it's a set of young people from around the country, of course, and I begin from right next to me. It's Esther Wamboi, who is the Secretary of Gender Affairs Faculty of Arts at Univer the University of Nairobi. Yeah. I had to get that right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Karibu sana. Thank you. Yes. Right next to, right next to her is P.B. P. Hey, Pijin. Uh, I almost said Big B. <laughs> Karibu sana. He is the Accountability and Transparency Party leader. And of course, at my far right, it's Sylvester Sargent, who is now the youth leader, of course, at RLP, which means? Republican Liberty Party. All right. Yes, Thanks so very much, guys, for making time even to join us on set. Let's begin this conversation about youth and devolution and what's, what's really the understanding. Also, let me begin with you. D do you think as young people really understand what devolution is? Uh, I could say it's a yes and a no. Mm -hmm. Because in this devolution, we still have youth when that, uh, who, who, when those counties, you know devolution is the centralization of power. Yes. In those counties, we have youth who are, who are there. That's why I say it's a yes and a no. Some of them who don't know what, re what devolution really is, I can say it's, some of them are ignorant, they mm -hmm. don't want to understand. And then the, the other part, the other youths who mm -hmm. don't know, we can say it's, there is a lot of bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. Like if you really want to know your ambitions, you want to know what devolution is, you want to be there at the cake cutting, there is a lot of bureaucracy. You, you, pass a, you pass through a lot of people so that you can really understand what devolution is. All right, uh, I understand that devolution is a matter of interest, but yeah. you have mentioned about the issue of bureaucracy yeah. and ignorance. How do we get these two together? Because I've ignorance, said some, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I've said some of them they are mm -hmm. ignorant, right. like they really don't want to know what it is. Mm -hmm. They just want to to get like it's so simple, like they don't want to get really to know what devolution is. And then bureaucracy. Some of the young people are ambitious. Mm -hmm. They want to know what what devolution is, they want to be there at the cake cutting process, you mm -hmm. see. Like you don't want to, like later, you, like you don't want to know later, okay? Right. Yeah. Yes, uh, Pigeon, let me come to you because of what Esther has mentioned about the issue of bureaucracy and ignorance. Well, do you think ignorance is the center stage of why most people don't know about devolution? Uh, uh, allow me to say that first I yes. like the concept of devolution in terms of development. Because mm -hmm. I believe if you devolve resources, because there are two things need to be devolved. Is resources and power. Mm -hmm. If you devote resources, power, and the responsibility, mm -hmm. the responsibility of youths, especially in the electoral system, mm -hmm. is whereby they elect those in power. We have power devolved from MCA to the governor, but we also have resources that should be devolved in terms of industries and those other things to create jobs for youths. To so see, youths are somehow ignorant in one way that they don't take serious part in being the people in power in that devolved system. Right. That's the first aspect. Mm -hmm. How many youths get out to be, be the leaders, the MC and whatever, so that they be part of the devolved system. Second thing is resources. How many resources are created in terms of the, the government? How many industries are being devolved? So you find, because there's no more resources in the, in the county level, mm -hmm. most youths will run away, especially the lit literate youths, will mm -hmm. run away to the cities. When they run away to the cities, it means we leave the county with no youths, but only elderly. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very tricky. Mm -hmm. So once we get them involved in those two aspects, and they get their right to start participating in those two aspects, then I think it will be the best solution for us. Uh, Pigeon, you have mentioned about resources uh, being devolved to the, to the 47 counties. And I have a question. What exactly do you want devolved for the youth to take their place? You see, for the youth, they form the manpower part of the country. The manpower. In fact, if, 70 you, devolve, yes, if you devolve something like, if it is, instead of constructing big roads in the city, why do you do that in the villages? They will be taking part as people who are working there. If you do like dams or, or hostels or schools, there'll be people employed there. So in this aspect, they can get that resource. Mm -hmm. But if you don't devolve or bring those services close to them where they can get employed, you see, you'll be putting them or you'll be making them transfer to the cities where they are, 
roads constructed, they are building constructed, so they will be living there. And Pigeon, we have seen an upsurge in the, in the recent released uh, census report in the city, that is Nairobi capital, the, the city, the capital city, and we have seen an upsurge of the people that are residing in Nairobi county. Could this be some of the reasons why we are seeing this upsurge? Yeah, I will say this. You see, if the concept of devolution, of devolution was introduced, if we could transfer these resources why youth are coming to, to, to congest the CBD and the Nairobi, mm -hmm. if we could have, like, for example, if you will revive Mumias in Western, most youth from Western will go back to Mumias. If you could do the same maybe in Kisumu, those, the, the fishery, they will go back there. If you do the same in Morang and wherever, youth will go back there. But you see, when a youth come to the CBD, he gets his job and maybe after some period of the time, job is over, they can't go back home. They fear going back home. It means they congest CBD and start those other vices, like either crime and whatever drug dealing, because they don't want to go back home and there's no opportunities. As you have seen, most of the industry closing in the CBDs, Nairobi and other big cities, industries are closing here. But youth transfer from the counties to the national. Where are they going? So we should be going back. Mm. This will help us a lot. All right, and let me, let's bring in Sylvester and talk, to talk about the issue. Sylvester, they have mentioned quite a, a number of things that I believe they are of concern. But yes. I'd like you to address the issue of, uh, rather the question of, why, why, why do we have to relocate from uh, the county governments all the way to, to, to the city? Because they mentioned about resources. Are resources the only issue to why we are having ourselves, you know, moving to the city? Yes, of course, uh, <coughs> for you to, like, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, uh, you have to make money. There is nothing like you are, you are in power and you are not making money. So at the end of the day, there must be an income which you, you are generating from this and, uh, when, you, when you are involved. So the youth, you see now the, the county governments, what they are doing is they are, they are trying to create policies they are, yeah, for the youth in their absence. Like when you go to those boards for, for, for the youth in the, in the counties, you will find most of them are being shared by old people. Why? Because they feel that these youth are not able to stand for themselves. They feel that these youth have engaged in those vices of the society like the alcoholism, drug abuse, while in contrary, they, these drugs, mm -hmm. the, the, the youth who are selling these drugs, Maybe it's, it's, they are even selling the drugs for the, for the big bosses. Mm -hmm. So you see, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a very big, uh, it's, it's, it's like a web <laughs> interluded. So this, it's, it's a, a big jungle of corruption right, in my right. county. Uh, yeah. let, let's come back to you, Esther, because I understand that you have quite a vast knowledge in terms of devolution. And young people, as you said, quite a number of people are left out in terms of understanding how devolution even works. Yeah. Just bring us on board and tell us, or other advices, what are some of the things that we need to look at, some of the opportunities we need to venture into in terms of devolution? Okay. We've said, like, youths, let's start with youths. How many, like, it's 70% 70, 70 plus youths, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not everyone who will be accommodated when you talk of devolution. Now, how can we, how can we help the others? that will not take part in devolution. We can start with business, mm -hmm. of which it is, like, our, our, the government of Kenya, it, there are very few people who can be supported. But the, the very few people who are supported, we can, they can, like, enlarge that company, for example, they enlarge the, the company and take the, the very few people who are literate, who are literate, and they'll be there to, to say that devolution is really working. Mm -hmm. Because most of the people, uh, most of the youth, right now they are complaining most of them it's not all of them because uh, there are still some people who have who have been taken right mm -hmm. yeah that's why i'm saying devolution can also can also take business and help them mm -hmm. help them and the, the the ones who will be helped they'll they'll be there to say devolution is really working and also we can look at talents yeah mm -hmm. and if talents are well well looked at i feel it will. It will not be as. It will not be something that will be of waste. All right. Now. All right. And and Pigeon, I want to come over to you again. And uh, what what exactly do we do we have to? What are exactly the responsibilities that we need to hit at? Because she has talked about so much of the things that we can do, other than you know even focusing on devolution. Are there things that we need to venture into, as you mentioned earlier, instead of us shifting now from our devolved units now coming back to Nairobi? What are things that we can do in our counties? 
Thank you very much. Allow me to say that this concept of devolution is not only not known to the youth, but also to the general population. Because to my aspect is that when we had devolution, mm -hmm. of course, the national, we don't talk of national government. There's no national government which doesn't sit in any county in terms of the physical aspect. Because uh, if you talk of the state houses in Nairobi, yeah. the idea was if we were to hit devolution very well from the onset in 2013, by ensuring that all resources, if possible, even up to 70% of this revenue, you see they're complaining. Mm -hmm. If 70% of revenue were to go back to the devolve unit and you have responsible leaders there, mm -hmm. let me tell you, in the five years' time that we've been having, those counties were to generate money back to the national government. Mm -hmm. But you see, the concept is that you devolve some responsibility with the less resources in terms of the finance. Mm -hmm. A challenge I give to youth is that instead of us maybe complaining about the opportunities, like either we can go to talents, we can go to business and any other thing, why don't you take the mantle? Mm -hmm. We are 70 percent. Why don't you join the policy and the leadership? Because mm -hmm. you see, leaders make policies that affect us. They make it from the county assembly to the national assembly. Why don't you be the policy makers? We have the numbers, as we are saying. We are over 70 plus. Mm -hmm. Why don't you use that number so that we'll be the policy makers to make policies in those houses by being elected, for example, and make policies that will favor youth in every level. So that's also as a green area we should venture to. Mm -hmm. But the same way, we should also invent in those other aspects like business. But, for example, what is the favorable environment for business? Mm -hmm. That's another question. If you were to start today your kiosk or either your business, mm -hmm. how many people are getting unemployed? With the number of many youths graduating. With the issue of retrenchment. Yeah. Also. Now mm -hmm. tell me, where is this person going to get that cash to buy your business or mm -hmm. to invest in your business? This is a bigger challenge that we must ensure that at least we create that opportunity. All right. And you have talked about responsive, uh, the leaders have felt it, that responsibilities. What, what should they focus on to? If they want to save the bigger population, mm -hmm. they should focus, especially most of their revenues or their budgeting, mm -hmm. back to the to, 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 to projects that uh, generate revenue. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have to have an industry in a county, first of all, you'll cut off for youth employment. So you'll ensure that youth are employed. When they're employed, you ensure that that county generates revenue from that, mm -hmm. uh, from that industry. Of which, Pijin, we have seen in several, in several counties. Let's talk about Machakos. Yes. We've seen doing that. But on the other hand, we still have young people from that place coming through the city. This is more of a peer influence. Mm -hmm. yeah, to youth, what we are saying in mm -hmm. to youth, they haven't believed that uh, county government can be a heaven to them. They still have that notion of Nairobi being the best place to be right. or Mombasa or Kisumu. So the second thing is also even what you want to make heaven to them in the county, is it really heaven to them? Right. Nairobi has more resources that attract them. Mm -hmm. How about the counties? Are they creating more resources that attract youth back to the counties? So those are two areas that we must tackle if you have to go in a better way. Have, have our leaders failed in terms of the devolution aspect? They have failed to understand it and also in terms of the resources. Because you see, for example, which houses approve resources going to the, to the, to the devolved units? Mm -hmm. It's both houses, either the Senate, Senate National the Assembly, and the, and the county. Mm -hmm. So if they were to be of good will for, revo for devolution, they could have supported devolution fully and Senate do oversight to ensure that resources they send to the county are implemented, you see, so that we also curb corruption. For example, Look how leaders, resources are in the county government, but how much is going to people's pocket instead of helping youth or right. resources? So that's also another big area where our leaders are failing too much. Right. Uh, let me come to you, Sylvester, and, and yes. let, let, let's, let's do my mind around this question of like, have our leaders failed and what exactly do we need to focus as young people in terms of our counties? Okay, yeah. I think our, our, all our leaders have failed. Mm -hmm. From the national all the way to the For counties. You it's all leaders have yeah, failed. Yeah, all leaders have failed. <laughs> right. Because you cannot say county county gov county governments alone have failed the the, the youth mm -hmm. while they hold only 15% of the budget. Or maybe even if it's 35, then it's still way below the below the, the half mm -hmm. of the revenue. So you see, all this problem started with the with the national government, uh, with even the formation of National Youth Council, and also all those youth uh, youth councils or associations, mm -hmm. because you see, you will find there's a lot of bureaucracy in the national where the national government wants to control the mm -hmm. the counties, mm -hmm. and also the nas the national gov the national government will want to be the spokes spokesperson of the of the youth, so you'll find the youth running to Nairobi, and they leave their counties. Mm -hmm. Because Akuna Mtu atakuwa na watetea. 
All right, uh, and yeah. Big Ben, uh, yes. probably from what you mentioned and what, even what Esther mentioned about the issue of bureaucracy seems to be the emerging mm. issue right now. And I think we need to address the issue of bureaucracy because at the end of the day, understanding of devolution will not take place if we don't solve some of these issues. How best can we solve this issue of bureaucracy for young people to understand and take their place in matters of devolution? Tomorrow, so I'd all say that in terms of bureaucracy, when we devolve the unit, we have the county government. Mm -hmm. I think there must be direct responsibility and, 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 and uh, like uh, roles of the county government, the right to do some issues, uh, say some decisions without mm -hmm. involving the national government. Because if you see, if the county government can employ people directly without any other board, we can even have a board for employment in county government so that we go directly there. You see like how Uduma Center was devolved. Mm -hmm. People can easily move to any county office and get their services, you mm -hmm. see. This is how we should also ensure that services are done there. But the problem is, who are the majority, if you're talking of youth getting the, 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 the bureaucracy, who are the majority in the bureaucratic ladder? They are not youth. Mm -hmm. You get even a youth, a youth chair of a county or a, a CS of youth, it's not a youth. What? So for example, getting this youth to convince this other guy to bypass the bureaucracy becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. So we need to ensure that counties have full autonomy in terms of some of the matters that affect us, especially in, in terms of recruitment and whatever stuff and those supporting business and whatever thing. They must have their fund and people coming to the national, you see? Like you have national fund. Pigbin, let's talk about this issue. It's, it's a topic that I'd like us to talk It's something, uh, the question I want us, all of us to discuss. We have been talking about bureaucracy. We have been talking about ignorance. Mm -hmm. My question is, if we were given a responsibility and told, Asta, I wanted to look into this particular issue and this particular docket, yet you don't have the information, how do you plan to execute your mandate? Yeah, come again. You've been given a docket, okay. yet you don't have the information and the, even the ability. You, have no, you have no knowledge about what's supposed to be done. Okay, How that do you is a, that? no, that is a problem that we're having in Kenya right now because we're talking that youths are in the county government, but the problem is which criteria is being used to take those youths? Maybe someone was a psychophant of a certain politician right. and he found himself in those county government. Do you, t do you want to tell me that that youth has that has youth's interest and can be able to crystallize everything, every, every youth's interest? He hasn't because he was just put there and you must be loyal to your boss. That is why I want to I want to emphasize that. Youths are not not everyone, not every youth has has the youth's interest. All right. Yeah. Do you think that there's an issue of who knows who? Yeah, exactly. We cannot be able to ignore that. Let, let, let me hear from Sylvester. When we are having uh, these dockets being advertised and then we see particular persons being given the dockets, is it uh, an issue of who knows who, according to your own understanding? Yeah, I think uh, these positions are tokens from those in power. Tokens? Yeah. Because if you, if you, if, even if you look from the top, when the president is appointing people, you see he's appointing somebody uh, with 94 years. What, what do you call that? That's a token to... To, to, to his old allies. So when you, when you go to the counties, you'll mm -hmm. find the CECs of the youth, uh, you'll even find the youth leaders there. They are not leaders. Maybe some of them are, com they are chief campaigners, some of them are their relatives. So at the end of the day, there is no participation from all the public. So you find these people are just unpicked and they do not represent, represent well, the interest of the youth. Sil Sil Sylvester, when you mentioned about uh, the 94-year-old and the like, and the, the, the tokens they have been yeah. given about the, the, the old generation and the like, yes. you know the NCI, NCIC board has a 20-year-plus young lady? So we, yes. it's not just an issue of like the age, it's an issue of like, well, what do we need to take place? And it's, it's like no, no response that's to it. just a drop mm -hmm. in the auction. So <laughs> that, that cannot add any value to us. When you have one post, uh -huh. and, you, and you want us to clarify, maybe if it could have been 80% of the positions in this country or like that one, now maybe we could start celebrating. But for now, I don't say... How, how many do you need to have for satisfaction? Yeah, maybe at least, uh, because how many are we as youth in this country? 70 plus percent. Yes, so we should be talking of... And then she there. mentioned about something called ignorance. How, no, how do you plan to, to handle that docket when you're given? There is nothing like ignorance mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. this ignorance only exists in in the brains of those leaders where they think now that they love they'll pick the, the hand, they'll unpick their people mm -hmm. and now come back so and with their reverse psychological uh, your addresses they'll come to you and tell you that you are not you are not keen on the on the on, the, on how the, the county works 
you are not following you, what 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 but what they are saying is just to cover up what what they did yes all right yeah let's hear Pijin what you got to say allow me allow two things mm -hmm. i'll start with a recent scenario mm -hmm. whereby there was census and census and Uduma number whatever was devolved from the national government to people in the counties mm -hmm. check on the selection criteria how many youths even within the villages got that job if not talking as he's talking about because even some were mm -hmm. some who applied yeah. it's, of, it's of understanding that everyone from the census even from a particular location Everyone that was counting people, they were from that particular location. No, Allow me to tell you that was not the reality in some yeah. areas. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Yes, we, see, we saw two mm -hmm. only. Yes. We only saw not two on air. Now, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you find the son and the daughters of the chief and mm -hmm. the village and whatever staff mm -hmm. were being selected. Let right. me tell you. These are people who have opportunity already. These are people where their family are able a bit. Mm -hmm. But when these resources go to the county and evolve, are the leaders really caring about the people who are less able? Because the resources target people who don't have maybe something to empower them. Mm -hmm. But who do we do? I'm a chief, I'm a whatever person, I'll bring my son or my relative, you see? So at the end of the day, even if we do all these things, they only benefit few people. Allow me to highlight other aspect where youth fail. You say our number is 70%. Mm -hmm. The challenge I meet today, as I'm telling you when I'm forming, when I'm coming with this uh, ATP party, is we have NYC, as he's saying, National Youth Council. Mm -hmm. Why is 70% of youth being brought in a council, not even in a ministry? That's the first thing, and it's right. our challenge. Uh, not, mm -hmm. not, not, not the challenge of the guy, it's our yes. challenge. Mm -hmm. Why are we only becoming youth wing and party wings and delegates? Mm -hmm. So it's all about us. Uh -huh. Are we really ready to take the mantle, mm -hmm. to be the leaders instead of complaining in the villages? Are all we right. really ready to be the policy makers? All right. It's a big challenge. Uh, Pijin, when you talk about uh, NYC, yes. where else can we fit if you, don't, if you don't have a particular people who are leading us? Now, that's a green area. The constitution says that for any elected post, you must be over 18 only. Mm -hmm. Okay, youth have this notion of you must have money, that's the first aspect, to be a leader, mm -hmm. like to be an MCA. The second aspect is you must be bought. So as a youth, I need to be paid. That's a concept still going around that if you don't have money to pay me, I'll not vote you in. As a youth, is like if I don't have money, I cannot contest. Mm -hmm. So the question is the constitution allow anybody above age 18 to contest, as long as maybe you have a degree and other qualification according to different levels. But are we really to unite ourselves? Mm -hmm. to ensure that we be the leaders mm -hmm. and be the supporters. Because we have been supporting people who have disappointed us for a long time. But we are still ready to support them and complain of unemployment. Who are creating the jobs? The leaders. Who are creating the policies? The leaders. So, what I challenge you is, why don't you use your number? Eh? Why don't you change that notion? Because what we are fighting now is mental revolution. Mm -hmm. There's something going on in the youth that we cannot be leaders. So that only need a revolution of mind, not not striking the road for government for 3.4, like you checked the other time, 3.4 million jobs. You go ask the government which promise that. The second thing they do is for is what? Tear gas and whatever stuff. Why don't you be the leaders instead of complaining day in? All right, guys, uh, we are running out of time, but I want to give each and every one of you time. Uh, Esther, t talk, talk to us about the issue of um, devolution and the young people. What are some of the loopholes we need to cover up and seal and move on? Mm -hmm. For me, I can say, uh, number one, for us to cover it up, number one, let us not take leaders into county governments, the youth. Mm -hmm. It should be something that, can, that, that should be advertised for everyone to see. So that these stories of becoming psychophants of politicians and taking them to those offices, and these are the people who don't, who don't really know what is youth's interest, and will be continuing to sing a, around saying that the youth are not being catered for. Mm -hmm. Like this post, which which should be occupied by the youth, should be advertised for everyone to see, whether you are illiterate or literate. Mm -hmm. And from there, we can now start saying that our our case, the people who got these things, mm -hmm. are catering for our interests. And so next time, I'll have to ask you about the the, the oh. young MPs. What are exactly they are doing? As we are talking about devolution, we need to ask ourselves what are, what is Jaguar doing? But we you know they are young people. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. Anyway, Pigeon, I'd like you to talk about the, the of course the young people and matters devolution. What exactly do you think county counties have to do in terms of uh, absorbing the young people? Well, I'll say the following. First. The counties need to have a, a data, for example. How many graduates do you have from your county in different areas? But we have counties that do. Yeah, the mm -hmm. issue is, are you using the data? Mm -hmm. For example, if we have youth graduating maybe as teachers from a different county, even mm -hmm. though we have the TSC, how many loopers, how many teachers do you, do you need? How many engineers are graduating from your county? So that we tap this information, mm -hmm. implement it, and ensure that you use our people. 
that's a, a green area that we must check in. Mm -hmm. Second thing, devolved counties or devolved system units as county government must ensure that they now take their budget back to the resources and, de and, and development so that they can engage youth there. Instead of youth coming up here, why don't you start, even if uh, they are said, if you construct maybe five kilometer road, youth and the people will be employed there. Why don't you start tapping these people in this direction? Yeah? So that you get something out of them. But if you are training your people, like uh, educated people from maybe Bomet County, and they're coming to Nairobi, mm -hmm. how are those youth helping your county? Right. Uh, are we having an issue of implementing devolution for the young people? I'm saying that's totally true. Mm -hmm. We have an issue there. Let's have even a rule. If you are saying like uh, two thirds of gender should not be of the same, whatever, of representation should not be of the same gender, why don't you even bring such uh, bills in the county government to ensure that maybe two thirds of whatever employed people in the county government are not, maybe are youth or whatever stuff, so that we can get them in a favorable environment. That's what I will ask. All right, uh, let me come to you, Sylvester, as we wrap this yes. up. Sylvester, the issue of ignorance bureaucracy has emerged from this discussion. How best can we address these two? And moreover, is the government really putting measures to try and absorb the young people in terms of decision making in the country? Okay, what I would say first is that, uh, uh, in my opinion, the youth, National Youth Council and all those councils which have been formed to represent the youth should first, should first be dissolved. I think they're not doing anything for the youth. Mm -hmm. So all of this should, best, should be dissolved and uh, even the organizations this, these people calling themselves the youth representatives, they should just, they, sh they should go home. Mm -hmm. We give it a try for, let's say, two years without these people and see. Even the, the document for Minister of Youth mm -hmm. should just be abolished and we see. If, if now we can, if, uh, then we see how we can uh, reduce this level, let's say corruption. Let, if you see things like a NYS scandals and those, we, let's see, let's give two years and check uh -huh. if there is no if there is there will be no corruption then we will see that it, the problem was with this uh, youth representatives. Next time, Sylvester, we need to address the issue of devolving even corruption because it's an issue that is emerging everywhere as, as yeah, most yeah, people yeah. are commenting on that. Yes. But anyway, guys, thanks so very much yeah. for making time to be together with us this morning. We much appreciate that was Esther. We have Pijin and we have Sylvester, of course, uh, talking about uh, the understanding or rather making the youth understand all about devolution. Well, my name is Karanja Alex. We get to do youth and politics again next week on Monday. Don't go anywhere while Man's Talk is coming up next after this. See you there.